Continuing on with more Lewis.examples, I went ahead and deleted a few just because I needed some more space. So we're, we're going to pick up with ClO3 negative. And so uh, we have chlorine that's bonded to three oxygens here. So chlorine is going to be our central atom, and we're going to have three oxygens around it. Okay, so we've got chlorine, which is seven valence electrons. Oxygen is six, but there are three of them, so it's 18. And then overall, it is a negative one charge, so we're going to add one electron in there. And so we have 26 valence electrons. We're going to add our single bonds there, which accounts for six of those 26 electrons, bringing us down to 20. We're going to start satisfying those oxygens. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And those two electrons left over are going to go right there on the central atom. So that brings us down to zero. Last thing we want to do is we want to just do a bracket around there. We want to put a negative on the outside. All right, coming down here to CH2F2. Looks like a lot of craziness going on, but think about it. We just have carbon with two hydrogens and two fluorines that are going to be attached. Now, once again, it does not matter where you put those atoms. You could put the two fluorines here, two hydrogens there, doesn't matter. All right, uh, like I said, running out of space. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, so count up how many valence electrons we have. I'm gonna do this off in the bottom right corner. Carbon, we have four valence electrons. Hydrogens, we have two total, one valence electron each. And then fluorines, we have seven valence electrons, but times two, that's 14. So we've got 20 valence electrons total. If I do a single bond to all of my four atoms, that's eight valence electrons. So 20 minus eight brings me down to 12. The hydrogens are already happy. So I'm gonna take those 12 electrons and start satisfying my fluorines with two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So I have zero left over. Fluorines are now good, and guess what? So is the carbon. It has eight valence electrons around it. Finally, and this I, I really do need to make some space, so let me go ahead and just get rid of some of this stuff here. Finally, we need to do CH3OH. Now, if you remember from topic five, we talked about how this is actually a structural form. Um, we actually, sometimes it's actually called a condensed formula. Uh, but we have this form here because it shows us how everything's bonded together. So CH3, so you have a carbon with three hydrogens around it. And then after the CH3, you have this OH, so O and then H. So it's kind of giving you the skeletal form of this molecule. But same thing applies. Even though you have now technically multiple central atoms, still the same thing applies. So Carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogen, how many hydrogens do we have total? We have four, so there's gonna be four total electrons there. And then oxygen has six, so there's 14 valence electrons. Get everything bonded using single atoms, just like we, or single bonds, just like we would before. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10. Of those 14 electrons, I just used 10, so there's four valence electrons left over. All right. Make sure all of your terminal atoms are satisfied. Well, the only atoms that are terminal are the hydrogens, and all my hydrogens are good to go. If I have any electrons left over, this is step five, if I have any electrons left over, where do you stick them? On the central atom. Well, this carbon has eight valence electrons around it, so the only central atom that I have left is this oxygen. So I'm gonna put two electrons there and two electrons there. So now I have zero left over. And if we take a look, all of my octets are satisfied. The carbon is satisfied with eight, and so is the oxygen. So this would be the correct Lewis dot structure for this particular molecule. Now, let's talk about some exceptions to the octet rule. Let me move my face over here so I'm out of the way. So some exceptions to the octet rule are this. First of all, you can have situations where the central atom has less than eight valence electrons due to what we call an electron shortage. The most prominent of these is boron is happy with six and beryllium is happy with four. So if we take a look at the examples down here, notice here for boron, boron only has two, four, six electrons around it in this particular molecule. That's okay. 
That's, that's an exception to the octet rule. If you look at beryllium here, beryllium only has two, four electrons around it. That's okay too. So boron and beryllium are exceptions to the octet rule in that they can have less than eight. You can also have less than eight valence electrons due to an odd number of electrons. An example of that would be NO2. If I were to really quickly figure out how many valence electrons I have with NO2, notice that I have 17 valence electrons, right? 17 valence electrons, gross. When you have an odd number of electrons like that, there is no way you're gonna be able to get your molecule to be completely satisfied. You're always gonna have this one electron. That's what we call a single electron, which makes it known as a radical, which makes this molecule particularly um, reactive because it's, as you can guess, it's very unstable. It doesn't like that. And so this molecule, NO2, is gonna to tend to be very reactive because it doesn't want that one electron. Um, notice, however, though, even though there's no way that this nitrogen is going to get eight electrons around it, it does want to get as close to eight as it possibly can. So you'll notice that it does end up having the double bond here, in which case creates a resonance structure. So I could have done the double bond over here as well. So nitrogen, if you take a look, nitrogen has seven valence electrons around it. That's as close to eight as it can possibly get. Probably the most prominent import or important exception that you'll see is what's called more than eight electrons, which is the expanded octet. So there are elements that can actually have more than eight valence electrons. In fact, most elements can have more than eight. How do you know if an element can have more than eight valence electrons? If the central atom is in row three or larger on the periodic table. So if you take a look at your periodic table, basically any element that's in row three and below can have an expanded octet. Another way to think about that is any element that is in rows one or two cannot. So that's a way you can look at it. So if you take a look at, for example, right here, you see how sulfur is bonded to six fluorines. How the heck does that happen? How does it have two? four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons around it. It's because sulfur is in row three. It can have an expanded octet. Xenon, another example. Xenon has two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12 electrons around it. It can have an expanded octet because xenon is in row five. Um, you'll also notice, wait, xenon, that's a noble gas. I didn't think noble gases could bond. Large noble gases can. If you think about xenon, which is lower in the group, xenon is a very large size. So even though it's a noble gas, it can actually still accept atoms to bond with. But the idea here is that it can have an expanded octet. So let's do some practice with this, I, this exception, right? So draw the Lewis structure for antimony pentafluoride, which is SBF5. So I'm gonna do that off to the side here. So we have SB, and then it's got half five, fluorines bonded to it. So I'm just going to put five fluorines around. So how many valence electrons does SB have? If you take a look, SB is in group 5A, so it has five valence electrons. Fluorine has seven, but there are five of them, so that's 35. So we have 40 valence electrons. So we say, okay, draw single bonds, two, four, six, eight, ten, and you're like, wait, Antimony can have 10 electrons around it. Doesn't that violate the octet rule? Antimony is in group, or excuse me, in row five. So antimony can have an expanded octet. This is allowed. So I would subtract those 10 electrons. Those remaining 30, I would start taking care of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. 26, 28, and 30. We used them all up. If I did have any left over, I would still be able to stick them on the central, but I don't have any, it's zero. So that would be my Lewis dot structure. This is the exception of having an expanded octet. What about the next one, BH3? So we have boron with three hydrogens around it. All right, boron, if I take a look at how many valence electrons it has, it has three. Hydrogen has three total, so we have six valence electrons. If I bond my hydrogens two, four, and six, I'm out of valence electrons. 
so I can't put any on the boron, but I can't do any double bonds or triple bonds, so boron only has six valence electrons around it. Two, four, six. Wait, that can't be. Yes, it can, because remember, boron is an exception. Boron's happy with six, so we're A-OK -okay there. And then finally, let's look at NS2. So we have nitrogen with two sulfurs on the side. Nitrogen has five, sulfur has six, but there are two of them, so that's 12 valence electrons for a total of 17. If I do single bonds there, that takes care of four electrons, bringing me down to 13. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So what do I do with that one electron that's left over? You stick it on the central. Now the sulfurs are happy with their eight. Nitrogen is not. Nitrogen only has two, four, and then five. Definitely not satisfied with an octet. Now here's the thing. Are we ever gonna have eight valence electrons for nitrogen? No, but we can certainly get it closer. If I took two electrons from here and put them in the center here, that would end up giving me uh, nitrogen that has seven valence electrons. Would I wanna do another double bond? In other words, would I wanna take these two and put them here? No, I cannot do that because nitrogen cannot have an expanded octet. It's not, in, it's in row two, so it's not eligible. So right here, it would have nine electrons around it, which is not possible. So I'm gonna put those electrons back. But what made me do the double bond on this side? I could have easily have done the double bond on this side. So as you recall, when you have a situation where you can draw it multiple ways, that is what's known as a resonance structure. And we're gonna get into this in subsequent videos, but to, to let you know now, when you have a resonance structure, you have to draw all of the possibilities. We'll cover that in the resonance video though. All right, we're gonna definitely do some more Lewis dot uh, drawings, but that wraps us up for section three. We'll see you in section four.